in this lecture we're going to be talking about linear vector spaces. And so we actually have several different topics we're going to be looking at. First, vector space definitions, the span and basis, and subspaces. So each of these will be its own video, and then I will also have a video that will give some practice problems. So this is very mathy. What we're talking about now is definitely a math, heavy math stuff. So get your math thinking cap on and let's head in the math directions. We're going to start some very basic. So we're going to talk about something called fields, field axioms. So the, here are some examples of fields that we could use. The reals. Okay. So here F stands for a field. R is the set of all real values. C is a set of complex values. So these are common fields that we might use. And basically a field is a set of math elements that satisfy these addition and multiplication properties. The commutative definition property, that is you can perform the operation in either order and get the same result. Associative, that is you can do it in, in parts and then and you get the same result depending, regardless of which way you do it. The distributive property where you, um, you can distribute, for example, a, a multiplication and an addition. Okay, so you can do it from the right or from the left. Identity, that is, there's an additive identity. That is, if you add the identity to an element, you get the element back. Okay, in this case, zero is the, is the identity. For multiplication, the identity is one. When you multiply a times one, you get the, the same thing back. The inverse, also an additive inverse, which means basically there's a negative, that the negative value is in the set. Okay, so in the field. And so a plus minus a gives you zero. That's the additive inverse. Multiplicative inverse, a times the inverse of a is equal to one. Okay, and so you can go through and show that each of these satisfies all of these properties for a field. So a field is kind of like a basic set of math elements. So in this case, numbers, real numbers, complex numbers, Okay, so that's that's an important definition. Vector space. Vector space is a little more fuzzy of a concept. It's very general. And with math, the more general, the more powerful. That is, if you can say something very general that's true, that can apply to a lot of different things. Okay, so, so when we talk about a vector space, we're talking about a very general thing. So in, in defining these properties, so a vector space is defined in terms of its properties. So the vectors are in the vector space, and then scalar values are in the field. So whenever you have a vector space, it's defined over a field. Okay, And so the vector space is closed under addition. That is, if I take two, two elements within the vector space, add them together, I get something that's still in the vector space. Okay, And um, an additive identity. That is, there, the vector space has a zero element, so that when you add any vector to, when you add zero, you get the, the vector back. So that's the additive identity property. That is, there is a zero element within the vector space. The vector space is commutative under addition. That is, it doesn't matter which order you put them in. So notice a lot of these properties are similar to the kinds of properties you have with the field, but now the vector space is more general. So you can think of the vector space as being a vector n-dimensional vector, for example, or an n-dimensional vector of reals, or an n-dimensional vector of complexes, or an n-dimensional vector of polynomials. Okay, So you can go through and show that a lot of different types of math objects can satisfy these properties. Okay, uh, Associative under addition. That is, if I, if I add them one way, I get the same thing as if I add them in a different order. Okay. Then some more properties. We have the distributive property. So if I distribute a scalar through, I can dis distribute it this way. A scalar times a sum is equal to the sum of the, of the uh, elements scaled. Here I have the scalar has uh, values, two different values, that I'm and I can distribute the v through that. Okay. Also, with the scalar, I don't have to multiply just by the left. I can also, also multiply by the right. So that is, it's commutative that way. Close under scalar multiplication. That is, any vector in the vector space, if I multiply it by a scalar in the field, is in the vector space. 
So this property, for example, basically shows that the vector space must be infinite in dimension. That is, it goes, if you think in terms of vectors, it goes all the way out to infinity. Because okay? I can always multiply by a larger number and any number. So if that vector, but let's say I multiply by 2, that vector times this, if that's in the vector space, I multiply that new vector by 2, and then again by 2, and then by 2, by 2, by 2. I can get an arbitrarily large vector that it must be in the vector space. So basically the vector space must be infinite. If I multiply scalars this way, a pair of scalars, I can first multiply by one scalar and then the other scalar and get the same result. Okay. So notice that this now is a vector in the vector space that I'm multiplying by a scalar. Here I'm multiplying these two scalars together and then multiplying a vector in the vector space. So at first you look at this like, of course, it's obvious. And, and in some ways it is, but if you think about what's actually going on, there's in terms of vectors, this is actually a, this is, so this is a scalar multiplication times a vector. Here is, uh, this is now a vector, and this is scalar times that new vector. Okay, so it's uh, not always that trivial. Um, multiplication by unity. That is, there is a there is if you it one must be in the field, okay. So remember the field. Uh, where, where is that? There is a one. There is a at multiplicative and uh, identity. So the one element must be in the in the field. And and so. In in terms of the field, we have that requirement, okay. So one times a vector gives the vector back. Now, those are the defining properties of a vector space. There are other properties of a vector space. For example, if v1 plus v2 is equal to v1 plus v3, that means that v2 must be equal to v3. Now, this property is not a defining property of the vector space, but you can use the defining properties to prove this property. Again, it seems trivial if you think about this in terms of numbers, but we're not going to be using numbers. We're, we're not going to, we could be using matrices. So in other words, one matrix plus another matrix is equal, and, and you can show that there's an equivalence of two matrices. Okay, so we, we need to not think in terms of numbers here. You need to think in terms of bigger uh, concepts. If, so if I have a scalar times a vector is equal to scalar times another vector, and that scalar is non-zero, that means the two vectors are equal. So this is actually one way of showing the equality of two vectors is to show something like this. Um, here, if a times v is equal to alpha times b is equal v is equal to beta times v, and if v is not zero, that means alpha, alpha is equal to beta. Okay, so here we show equality of vectors. Here we show equality of scalars in a vector context. And so there's also a zero element. If I multiply a scalar times the zero vector, I get zero. So that makes sense. So here are some examples of vector spaces. The field is a set of reals. The vector space is an n-dimensional real vector of real values. Okay. Here's another one. The field is the set of complex values. And the vector space is the n-dimensional complex vectors. Here, the field is the reals. And the vector space is the n-dimensional complex vectors. So that you can show that this still works, even though we have a different you know, we have reals and complexes. Uh, the field here is the reals, and the vector space is the rational numbers. Okay. And uh, here the field is reals. Actually, actually, I don't think that one's correct. That one may not be correct. So, anyway. <laughs> I, I, I just re realized that. So, uh, and, and finally, here's another one. The, vec the vector space is reals, and I'm sorry, the field is the reals. The vector space is the space of nth order polynomials. Okay, so you have the coefficients a0 through an, this polynomial then, each of those coefficients is real. And so p is d defines this vector space, n-dimensional polynomials. So in, in, in general, we can think of it as vectors, like an n-dimensional vector, and but it doesn't have, have to be just a vector. It can be something like a polynomial, 
which is not like a vector per se. So these are some examples. We could also use um, vector space could be an n by n matrix, okay? An n by n matrix, and you can go through and show that it satisfies all of those properties as well. So here we used vector types things, but and 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 it's helpful at least when you're thinking about these properties to think of them in terms of vectors. So if you think of adding a vector, so you remember you go head to tail, head to tail, and so if you think in terms of uh, the defining properties of, of like two-dimensional or three-dimensional vectors, that that at least gives you some some insight into what's going on in the entire process. Linear combination. If I have a set of vectors in the vector space, then a linear combination of those vectors is if you have a set of scalars in the field, then the linear combination is the weighted sum of those vectors weighted by the coefficients okay so this is a uh, linear combination we'll be using linear combinations a lot okay so again remember those vectors v1 through vk in the vector space are not necessarily n dimensional vector it could be polynomials and this and they all satisfy the same kind of property independence Okay, so no element can be given as a linear combination of the other elements. So basically, if you have a set of k elements, then no one element can be written in terms of the other elements in that set. Okay, and the zero element cannot be one of the elements. So none of these can be zero. Obviously, if one of these is zero, then zero can be written as a linear combination of the other elements where the the coefficients are all zero. Okay, so that's why zero element cannot be one of the elements. So the vectors v1 through vk are linearly independent. If a set of elements is not linearly independent, then it's called linearly dependent. We can also talk about the span of a set of vectors. This is the set of all linear combinations of those vectors. We'll talk about that in just a, more in a little bit. So here we have k elements. These are linearly independent if and only if a weighted sum that adds up to zero implies that all of these coefficients are zero. Okay, so this is a property and you can go through and prove this property that a set of elements are linearly independent if the only linear combination that gives zero is when all the coefficients themselves are zero. Okay, so that's linearly linear independence.